a happy ending here for the SICK QMX. If you remember from the previous video, the uh, processor pin that should be outputting the pulse width, pulse width modulation signal for the 5 volt switching supply uh, was apparently damaged at some point and was just always high, which led to the, effectively a short circuit through that switching supply. Uh, but I'll show you now that the, the radio is actually turning on and uh, turning off and is actually fully functional. It puts out the rated output on all bands. It uh, <coughs> works in digital modes and CW, uh, receives OK, and uh, the solution may not be exactly what you expected. So if you'll give me a minute, I'll pull the radio apart and show you what I actually did here. So if you're at all familiar with the QMX, you'll, you'll immediately recognize that there's something going on with this 5 volt supply board. And what I've actually done is pull all of the switching components off, since we don't have a way to drive them, and replace them with a, a linear 5 volt uh, voltage regulator. And this, uh, this voltage regulator is a... Uh, L7805 CDT TR. Uh, it's kind of massive overkill for this use as there's not a full amp of current draw on the 5 volt rail. But I had these left over uh, from some uh, USDX radios that I was repairing, and that's what they use. Um, you'll also notice that the uh, voltage regulator is actually mounted upside down, and that was so that I could use the pads for the inductor as the input and output of the voltage regulator. That did require uh, this jumper wire, this bodge wire here, that goes from, uh, let me grab the, the schematic, it goes from uh, where R106 used to be over to uh, a pad that feeds down to the, the input of the inductor. And then there's a little jumper wire there that, that grounds the voltage regulator. Not entirely happy with having it upside down uh, because of the thermal condition uh, considerations, and it does get quite hot. I'll, uh, I'll insert a, a thermal camera video, but or a thermal cam camera photo here. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty hot, but it's within the operating conditions uh, from the data sheet on this regulator. And uh, it, it do once it's heated up, that's pretty much it. It doesn't seem to heat up more. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how consistent the, the five volt current draw is on the QMX, but looking at the schematic, I would expect it to be pretty level. Uh, you know, when it's running, it's gonna be drawing about the same amount of current. In receive mode, this radio does draw maybe 70 milliamps more current than one with a functioning uh, switch mode supply. But at the same time, uh, we've kind of resurrected it from the grave. I'll show you where on the schematic I actually grafted in the voltage regulator. All of these components that have an X were actually removed from the board. I can insert a picture of what that looks like when they're all removed. And uh, then the, the voltage regulator was, was grafted in on the 12 volt rail. And I left the protection uh, zener in place. And because of its fed here, all of the uh, reverse polarity protection, all of the processor controlled switching of the five volt rail is still functional and that makes the processor very happy. Uh, it seems slightly confused that it can run at 0% duty cycle on the switch, switch mode supply, but uh, that's just in the diagnostic screen. In practice, the radio works beautifully. In case you were wondering, uh, these are the components that were removed from the board. Uh, you can go back and look at the schematic if you want to know what they were. I used a hot air soldering station to, uh, to
to desolder them. No real, uh, no real issues with that. Uh, they came off pretty easily. So uh, let's uh, let's put the radio back together, and I'll show you what the diagnostic screen shows while it's up and running. Okay, so here we are at the computer, and uh, we'll boot up the QMX here. And we can go into the serial console. And if we look at the diagnostic screen, you can see the 3.3 uh, volt switch mode supply is still working. I'm actually powering the radio at full voltage now uh, because I've been doing some transmitter tests. Uh, but the, the switch mode power supply that is working for the 3.3 volt rail is fine. The duty cycle is 24%. Um, here, the, uh, the status is okay. That's important. The, the voltage here that we're seeing is actually the voltage out of the linear regulator. And uh, you can see uh, this is probably slightly over the target voltage, so it's trying to drive it down, uh, but failing and going down to duty cycle zero. After discussion with the owner of this radio, uh, at my advice, we, we actually cut pin 26 off of the processor. If you remember from the previous video, we had, uh, well, I had uh, lifted it off the board <clears throat> and, uh, and left it floating so that it wouldn't have a, a, a signal going into the power supply. Uh, since all the components are removed from the power supply, the, the PWM5V signal doesn't really matter. But I thought it might be safer in case at some point down the road, uh, this thing changes hands and someone looks at it and they're like, what on earth is going on with this power supply? I'm going to put a new one in. Uh, if they put a, a new switching supply in there and powered this thing up without a current limit, it would, it would fry it immediately. So it just seemed fast or it just seemed safer to uh, disable that signal. So if someone did that, what they'd just get is no uh, five volt rail at all, rather than a, a five volt rail that that fries the protection zener and then does uh, nasty things after that. Uh, all the controls on the radio work. Uh, I've actually made some FT8 contacts on it. Uh, it receives okay. The uh, RF sweeps look okay. Um, they're not the best I've seen on a QMX, but they're certainly acceptable and they're similar to those uh, in the instruction manual. So uh, this QMX is gonna go back to its owner and hopefully it'll live a long and fruitful life uh, with its uh, heart transplant of sorts. And thank you for watching.